blessings of the day to you and thank you for joining me and being a part of the Bending Angel Prayer Ministry. Today's prayer is a prayer for rocks of faith, ancestral photographs, and ancestors. I've always had a yearning in my life for the Emmett family history, which began in England. And then my great-grandmother, Catherine Mary Emmett, came over in 1887, departed from a vessel in Galveston Bay. The ship captain gave her away. Then she was married in Galveston to my great-grandfather, John Emmett. From all of that became many things in our family history, including my great-grandmother being the mother of Memorial Park. But I've also been entranced by the stories of families who lived near Emmettville, my childhood home. As elsewhere in rural America, pioneering families came here from foreign lands to pursue their dreams, to marry, to raise children, and find happiness. They left everything behind them, including their mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, when they knew almost certainly they would never see each other again. And they brought with them a little more than a rock of faith, a strong work ethic, and hope for the best. These ancestors were rugged indeed. They were hardworking and they withstood floods, droughts, fires, disease and pestilence to carve out for themselves and their descendants places to live, to work, raise children, worship and to build churches. Churches to go to at times when there was nowhere else to go or to call home and no other place at which to be comforted by God. In the face of death, their struggles, crop failure, or tragedy. Such was true of the Amish farmers who settled in Gum Island, Texas, now known as Fairbanks, in the 1800s. They had enough of floods and hurricanes and mosquitoes and left before 1900. The Amish were followed by legendary Cypress Fairbanks, pioneering farmers, ranchers, rice farmers, dairymen named Caesar, Swankey, Arola, Marietta, Francone, and Jones, and more than 30 other dairymen and their families whom they supported and not only themselves, but they fed us. They set an example for us to follow, not only in our time, but for future generations. Their stories are our stories, and their resilience in overcoming their struggles helped me in overcoming mine. And the compassion I have for their disappointments and flaws enabled me to be more compassionate to others in my relationship with family and with the people in hard times in the, my collaborative divorce practice. As with my pap polio, the fact that these pioneers survived hard times gave me courage to overcome the devastating consequences that polio and paralysis posed for me. A dear friend of mine gave me a copy of this 90-year-old photograph, which is posted on the website. The photograph is a school teacher, Miss Wickman, and 17 of her students standing on the steps of the White Oak Schoolhouse, not too far from where I grew up. And next to that school stood a beautiful wooden Lutheran church with a steeple. It's now known as the 1891 St. John Church. The church in 1968 was relocated and now stands at Sam Houston Park near downtown Houston. The schoolhouse is gone, but if you go to Sam Houston Park, there's a great history there. And if you stand on the front steps of that church, you might just envision the day where Miss Wickman and these 17 students stood on the front steps of the, of the school. The problem with old photographs that survive the test of time and the elements is it's seldom 
are the names of the people in the pictures written on the back of the photograph. But thanks to Ruth Caesar, the beautiful girl standing to the right of her teacher, Miss Wickman, the names of every student appears. At Cypher High School, I went to school with the Swankey and the Gabriel grandchildren of some of the students pictured here. It is my prayer that this photograph reminds you of why faith and ancestral roots are important. Learning their history, recording it, and preserving it is God's blessing to us and all humankind. And in the chaos, polarization, uncertainty, hardship, and death, and the pandemic, our ancestral stories give us roots to anchor us, to sustain us, and to reassure us that God has a greater plan for you and me, no matter what we're going through now. That is an innate need in me, and probably you too. God has spoken to us in scripture about reverence for our ancestral spirits and the power of having a rock of faith. Leviticus 32. Rise in the presence of the aged, show respect for the elderly, and revere your God. I am the Lord. Isaiah 32, 2. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind, a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert, and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. And last, Psalm 18, 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Let us pray together. Dear God, I thank you for my ancestors who paved the way for me and future generations. God, please help me learn from the lives my ancestors lived and thereby find wisdom and strength in the living of my own life. God, may I find you and your purpose for me and the example of my forefathers. God, may I trust in you and what my ancestral family overcame. For you, for with you, whatever lies ahead for me and those I love will be seen by you through the lens of your love for me and for them. God, in 90 years from now, may my descendants see my love for you and how I lived my life and how I served you in faith and with thanksgiving. And last, God, please grant to all of us the willingness and the spirit to spend the time identifying family members and friends on the back of photographs, especially the old photographs where the knowledge of generations will soon be lost. Amen. If you like this prayer, please share it. Spread the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And until we pray again next time, please remember that God and his angels are just a prayer away.